Sorry, a little bit of sick came up in my throat when, uh, when I heard the words BBC and trustworthy and reliable in the same sentence. <laughs> Hi, it's me again, and it's been a busy week for the newspapers with regards to the BBC and the TV licence. There's been tons, tons of stories over the last week, 10 days, isn't there? But I've got one of my favourite headlines from the whole thing, so I thought we could take a look at this story together now and have a bit of a chat about it as always, shall we? BBC in crisis as huge campaign for referendum on licence fee to launch. A major campaign for a national referendum on whether to axe the BBC is set to launch in early 2022. Well, to me, that sounds like a pretty exciting sounding headline that's writing some good checks. Let's see if it can cash them, shall we? The Sunday Express understands that a large scale campaign will push for a referendum on whether to scrap the licence fee. Defund the BBC, set up in 2020, is in talks with senior politicians and major Conservative Party donors to launch a nationwide campaign for a referendum. Now, I've talked about Defund the BBC on this channel a couple of times before, and I quite liked them when they started. When they started, the guy, I forget his name now, but the guy that was sort of the main face of it, and he says he started it, started it because he watched one of my videos when he was at university, and that's what got him started. And I've spoke to him, seemed like a nice guy, and he did a few interviews and that. Um, but I've fallen out of favour a little bit with him. I've even been blocked on Twitter by them. Which seems odd to me, because we're all on the same team, aren't we? So I didn't fully understand that. I never said anything negative about them. I was planning to do a video about them. I didn't do it, because we're all on the same team. Why would I want to put down someone who's playing on the same team as me? It makes no sense. So my only problem with Defund the BBC is the money raising. I mean, they've got a GoFundMe going for, what, 80 grand? It's something like that, isn't it? And that doesn't even include like the private donations they've had through PayPal or however else they took them, like through their website and stuff. They've had a lot of money go through their bank account. And I can't really see that they've done all that much for it. They've got a website? Well, I know how much a website costs to set up because I've done one myself, tvlicensestock.co.uk, shameless plug. It doesn't cost that much to do. And I managed to put out a video almost every day about the TV license and helping people to cancel their TV licenses by email and private videos and stuff like that. And I don't beg you for money. So I don't fully understand it. Maybe they've got something in the pipeline that's big and that's what the money's for. I hope that that is the case. I do hope that is the case. But um, yeah, if they're gonna push this, they've got more clout than me. I freely admit that and I've got no problem with that whatsoever because we're on the same team, obviously. You know, if, if they can push this through and get some traction on this, I'll support it. And I, I will ask you guys out there to support it as well, because this could be part of the fight that could really take us all forward together. Couldn't it? A source working with Defund the BBC said, The centenary of the BBC's foundation offers us the perfect opportunity to ask hard questions of our national broadcaster. Let's make it a year to remember and give the British public a vote. The source also said, in a free society, it's good and just for the taxpayers who pay the salaries of their news presenters and researchers to have a say in how well the institution is run. The question is straightforward. Do you want to keep the BBC licence fee or get rid of the licence fee? When I say a source working with Defund the BBC, I think there's only two there now, or maybe even one. You've got Rebecca Ryan, who's the woman behind it, and... The company of Defund the BBC is registered to her, as is the website. And you've got Calvin, who's a spokesperson, but he's off doing other political spoke stuff. He does a lot on GB News and talk radio. I often see him on. Good for him. Happy for him. But yeah, I think there's only the two of them now, but I'm willing to be corrected if someone out there knows different to me. Right, where were we? Polls have shown that support for the BBC is waning massively. Now there are so many alternatives, such as Netflix and Amazon Prime. Yeah, before the previous charter... Uh, the government did a poll. They got someone, one of them, you know, research companies in to do a poll. And um, they questioned the British public about, you know, what they want to see from the BBC and how much they could get away with charging for it and stuff like that. And the poll said, I think it was 60%, 60% of people, yeah, I think it was, I'll put it on the, on the screen if it's different. But a poll said 60% of people supported the TV licence fee model. Oh, that was a while ago now, though, and a lot has come out since. 
And I could imagine that would change. I can't see the government doing that poll anymore, can you? Because it's not going to be 60% anymore, is it? You know, And elections have been won and lost on 1%, haven't they? So if it's 50-50, oh, which way do you go? I don't but he mentions there alternatives such as Netflix and Amazon Prime. But I don't think Netflix and Amazon Prime are alternatives to the BBC. Personally, I think the main alternative to the BBC is ITV, isn't it? I mean, they don't have the radio stuff and as big a news stuff as the BBC has. But it is a similar channel, doing similar shows, soap operas, dramas, things like that. And they manage to fund themselves fully through advertising and product placement. And they're profitable for it, and they make some good stuff. And they're pushed to make better stuff because advertisers want to advertise better stuff because there's more viewers on better stuff. They're the alternatives, and it just it it blows my mind that the people in the government can't see that that it can be funded. It could still be a state broadcaster. Channel Four's a state broadcaster, and it shows adverts. Why can't the BBC? And if the BBC cannot show adverts as part of the charter for getting the license fee, then they must get rid of the UK TV group, which they own 100% of, Dave Gold and all that, because they show adverts on mostly BBC shows that you paid for a long time ago with your license fees, and they make profit from that through advertising. So how can that be right? If they're not allowed to show adverts, then you've got to get rid of UK TV group as well, BBC. I'm sorry, you can't have your cake and eat it, can you? Few would argue the archaic establishment does not urgently need reform. <laughs> it really needs reform. Bloated expenses and salaries are signs of the BBC's wasteful bureaucracy. They're the most wasteful company on the planet. They've got to be. They've got to be, haven't they? I mean, recently in the news, Tim Davey, the boss of the BBC, was saying he's going to lay off 475 staff just from BBC News. And that asks the question, how many are left? How many are left? And if you can lay off 475, what were they doing? It makes no sense, does it? It's wasteful. It's a wasteful company. And, you know, the analogy for that is if someone gives you 100 quid, you'll, you'll spunk, you'll go, and have a, you'll go and have a nice dinner or a night out or something, wouldn't you? But if you work hard to earn 100 quid, you'll probably put it towards your rent or your bills or save it or do something more practical with it because you had to earn it. That's ITV. That's what ITV are doing. But the BBC are the ones being gifted the money, so they can just spunk it. They can just do whatever they want with the money because they know they're going to get another 3.2 odd billion quid again next year, no matter what they do with the money. Wasteful. They're a wasteful company. And I can't see it being repaired whilst we're still giving them free money. How can it possibly be repaired? How can you possibly get that mentality out of people's heads when they're getting free money? The only way to fix the BBC is scrap it completely and start again from scratch or make it go commercial and earn its money. The British public finally deserves some transparency and accountability as to how their hard-earned money is spent. Couldn't agree more. We also deserve the option of choosing to watch independent news channels without the financial penalty incurred for not paying the compulsory and outdated licence fee. Well, I found the end of that paragraph surprising because that's a statement from defund the BBC themselves that should know the rules. And it says there without the financial penalty incurred for not paying the compulsory and outdated licence fee. It's not compulsory. You should know this, defund the BBC. I hope you just spoke wrong there because you're being interviewed and that's not what you actually think. It is not compulsory. Maybe for watching news channels live, of course it's compulsory. But you don't have to pay for a TV licence. There's no law saying you have to have a television licence because you don't. So I hope you've just misspoke there and that's not what you actually think because you should know the rules, defund the BBC. But that said, I quite like the sound of this bit. Right? And we've got the, the midterm charter review next year. And maybe something nice that could come from the midterm charter review would be allowing people who don't have a television license to watch live news on other channels, like GB News, Sky News, whatever. Wouldn't that be a nice thing to do? And I think the government would probably enjoy that too, because that means more people get to enjoy the government propaganda live, doesn't it? But that sounds fair to me. If you don't pay TV licence, you can't watch anything as it's being broadcast, use BBC iPlayer. But you should be able to watch rolling news or live news when it's on. So, yeah, that makes sense to me. I quite like the sound of that. I hadn't thought of that personally, but I like it. Critics argue that the BBC has escaped taxpayer scrutiny for too long. Yeah, agreed, agreed. 
When it was set up almost 100 years ago in October 1922, its directive was to inform, educate and entertain the British public. Well, you're a nun out of three now, aren't you? Frankly, when was the last time you felt informed, educated or entertained by anything you see on the BBC? EastEnders informs, educates and entertains, does it? Or, or does it just depress? Taxpayer money was given to the BBC and in return the nation's broadcaster would provide a trustworthy and re <coughs> reliable news service. Sorry, a little bit of sick came up in my throat when, uh, when I heard the words BBC and trustworthy and reliable in the same sentence. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to have a drink. The BBC has warned that decriminalisation of the licence fee would cost the corporation an estimated £1 billion over five years and abolition would cost it more forcing it to seek alternative sources of income, such as subscription or advertising. Yet yeah, that's the whole point. We want you to find alternative ways of paying for your company, paying the staff wages, paying for your offices, and paying for all the bloke. Why should we pay anymore? Go and find an alternative. And that alternative is advertising, because nothing makes you sharpen up and tighten your belt and do a good job like earning your own money does it? And the other bit here it says, which I quite like, uh, the BBC warned that decriminalisation of the licence would cost the corporation an estimated £1 billion over five. It'll cost you a lot more than a billion pounds because who would pay it? Who would pay it? And I did a video a while back about TV licences in other countries and one of the interesting ones was Japan. Japan has a television licence but it's not enforced in any way, shape or form. Nothing bad will come if you choose not to pay the television licence fee in Japan. So do you know what? Hardly anyone pays it. So if they decriminalise it, it's going to cost you more than a billion, because who would pay it then? Everyone would stop. I mean, it cost them loads more than that. And then abolition would cost it even more. Well, it would, yeah. It would cost you 3.2 billion, because that's pretty much the amount of money you get from TV licence fees. Who writes these things? Who writes these things? Oh, oh hang on. The BBC. That's who wrote this thing. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know what more I expected from it than that. But just show some adverts and then we can get rid of you. So my only concern with all of this is that maybe it's just going to be a petition because we've had petitions before and when a petition reaches 100,000 signatures, it may get discussed in Parliament. But we have had a couple of them that were discussed in Parliament. They were discussed in the little back rooms and the MPs just did not get it. They just didn't understand what we were trying to achieve. And you know, one of the MPs, my favourite clip in it, I'll put it here now, look at this. But there is another important point about the licence fee, I think, and that is that it helps preserve BBC independence. Yeah. It protects it, most of the time at least, from political interference. And even in a time when trust in institutions is declining, it is still the most trusted news provider. When I'm watching BBC News, they are trying to get to the truth, however imperfectly. And that was from a debate on a TV licence petition. Tells you everything that you need to know about how they think of the BBC licence fee. They live in a different world, the MPs, and they don't understand that, one, we don't feel we should have to pay for something that we may not want to pay for, and two, that 159 quid can make a lot of difference to a lot of people's lives. But it's not going to an MP, is it? 159 quid is barely lunch to most of the MPs. So I just hope this isn't a petition and it goes a bit more in depth than that. And I want to support it. I do. I want to go all in on it. And I hope it's really good so I can go all in and I can persuade you lot to go all in with me on it. Because it could be the big tool that's going to win us the fight against the TV licence, couldn't it? But you've got to live in hope. You've got to live in hope. I don't want to sound negative on the whole thing. I want to live in hope and I want it to be one of the things that works. I really do. But what do you think about this? Do let me know in the comments below and we'll try and have a bit of a chat about it. Let me know what you think of defund the BBC as well. I'll be interested to see what you lot out there think about them. So you go and do that and I will see you in another video again soon. Thanks for watching.